What's the difference between KW and KVA in electrical systems? So last weekend, I was fortunate enough to go to a Formula E race. ABB flew me out and I got to see electric race cars. So there's a NASCAR version that they've put together as a prototype, as an all electric race car. And then there's a Formula E, you know, Formula One kind of a car as well. And while I was there, I was seeing all of these chargers that they built for these race cars. And they're huge, like megalithic chargers um, just to charge these things for a race. So when I looked at the ratings though, they kept talking about everything in KVA and when I started thinking about the batteries for EVs they're often rated in KW and I was like okay this is a great video because there's a massive difference so let's get into it. Have you ever wondered why a lot of equipment in electrical is rated in KW and some other stuff is rated in KVA? Like if you look at light bulbs they're rated in watts and uh, if you look at transformers they're rated in volt amps and a lot of people think like a KW equals KVA because of the power formula, which we'll get to here in a second, but they're not the same thing. So while you could kind of think of them as, as the same thing, they're really not. And it's important to understand why not. A kilowatt means thousands of watts, KW. Um, a watt specifically is a rate of something, meaning over time, there's a certain amount of uh, energy being transferred from a, uh, a generator or an alternator or something like that is providing a certain amount of power. So there's a transfer of that energy per second, a transfer of a certain amount of joules per second. So if we say 100 watts, what we're actually saying is it's 100 of joules of energy transferred every single second. So a light bulb, 60 watt light bulb, means 60 joules of energy are being transferred from the supply through that device and are dissipating outward as light and heat. Um, when we talk about a kilovolt amp, KVA volt amp, just volts times amps is a volt amp. We're talking about thousands of volt amps and it's not a, a rate this time, it is a fixed capacity. So when you talk about a VA, we're talking about how much fixed capacity does this system have to supply current flow, to supply a certain voltage, to be able to transfer energy to a load. So a lot of times when you're talking about KVA, we're talking about the supply side and we're talking about KW, we're talking about the actual load and what it's consuming. So storage capacity available and consumption, getting rid of deleting. I mean, you can't delete energy. <laughs> it can't be created or destroyed, but you can transfer it into some other useful type of, uh, of thing, which is what electrical circuits do. Now, it is really important to consider that technically VA is a rate because volts times amps. Amps is a rate, right? So it's a rate of charge flow per second through a conductor. So technically you could still view KVA or VA as a rate, but it's just a rate of power that's being supplied or transferred from a source. We don't need to get that technical. For the sake of the video, I'm just considering it a fixed quantity. So where you're gonna see what watts and volt amps, you know, when they equal each other, it's usually when you're messing around with the power formula, you have this formula P equals I times E, where P is power, I is current, and E is potential. When we examine this, what we're really saying is the measure of power is the watt, the measure of current is the ampere, and the measure of potential is the volt. And when we take an amp times a volt, E times I, we get a volt amp. Well, a volt amp then equals a watt. So a lot of people are like, well, KVA and KW, it's the same thing. Watts equals volt amps. That's only true in very, very specific, incredibly rare, nearly impossibly rare situations. Uh, and we'll break into that in a second. But this is kind of where people come up with this, like a watt and a VA is the same thing. KW and KVA is the same thing. It's not wrong. It's just also way, way, way not right. So a KW, kilowatt, when we talk about kilowatts, we're talking about consumption or use we're actually, how much is a load using? So again, we're kind of at the load. When we talk about KVA, we're talking about what is the capacity? What is being supplied? Um, you could think of it as storage too. How much stored up capacity do we have to be able to transfer energy to a load? Um, when we talk about KW or Watts, we're talking about true power or real power. Some people might call it active power. Um, when we talk about KVA, we're talking about apparent power, which is the total 
um, real power plus any reactive power. If you have inductors and capacitors in a circuit, you're going to have some sort of reactive power from inductive reactants and capacitive reactants together in a circuit. So it's a vector sum from a triangle from doing Pythagorean theorem that you get the total amount of apparent power. Again, it's a capacity, it's not a rate of transfer, whereas this consumption, it is a rate of transfer. So when we think of KW, we're thinking about what is the actual work being done? Is there heat being produced from this thing? Is there light being produced from the thing? If so, we're gonna rate it in KW. When we think K, uh, KVA, we're, taking, we're talking about how much energy stored up or how much what's the capacity of energy to transfer so uh, we have to introduce this thing called power factor to talk about this power factor is something that you're gonna have to get familiar with because again we're talking about apparent power true power and reactive power you have to understand power factor uh, power factor is a ratio of watts to va this is the living proof that watts do not equal va because you can have a certain amount of consumption and a certain amount of energy supplied and they're not going to equal each other. If the if the utility company is supplying a certain amount of power, then a load is only consuming a certain amount or it's got a couple of different ways where like some of it's storing and some of it's uh, consuming, then your wattage is not going to match your VA. And so we get this thing called a power factor, which is just the ratio of whatever's being consumed to whatever's being supplied. The closer we get to 1.0, which we call unity power factor, it means 100% of what's being supplied is actually being consumed, which means the power company can charge 100% of what they're producing because the consumer's consuming 100%. That's what utility companies love. They never get that though. <laughs> so like everything that's made has some capacitors in it, has some inductors in it. Motor loads, if you're in commercial environments or industrial environments, there's tons of motors and motor loads and ballasted lighting that, that um, causes inductance inside of these circuits and causes a inductive reactance inside of the circuit. So you actually get a lot of reactive power or what you can kind of think of as like wasted power. It's not truly wasted because it has a useful function. It's just that that useful function doesn't go to actually producing light or heat or anything like that. Um, reactive power is the power that is utilized to keep a machine working. So if you think of a transformer, right? A transformer is just two windings. Well, the actual current flowing through the wires, that's useful, right? And that's what we would, uh, through a light bulb, the light bulb emitting some kind of light or heat, that's useful work. But if we have a transformer, there's no heat or light or anything. The function of a transformer is to produce a rapidly alternating uh, expanding and collapsing magnetic field. So you can induce current from one coil that's not touching another coil. So that magnetic field in the inside, that's not actually doing any work. It's not, uh, it's not performing work. It's not producing some kind of a rotation in a, a motor. It's not producing light or heat or anything like that. So that's why I mean, it's kind of wasted. It has a use, but it's not going to work. So that's why we want to understand power factor is the difference between wattage and VA and that wattage and VA are not the same thing. So when does KW equal KVA? Really, if you're doing a power formula calculation, watts equals VA, a watt equals a volt amp. That's kind of the only time you're ever going to see it. It's just theoretically true, um, but it's only true in purely resistive circuits. And that is a circuit with a resistor or only several resistors. No inductors, no capacitors. It's purely resistive, only resistance. So uh, if you have like a heating element, you know, heating element's gonna be a large resistor. If you have resistive lighting, like incandescent lighting is, uh, is essentially just a resistor. So it's possible to whatever is supplied to this thing that you're gonna get an equal consumption out of it. But everything else, like otherwise every single other thing in the world, <laughs> Uh, any lights that have ballasts, so like compact fluorescent, fluorescent, um, LEDs, every kind of bulb, high pressure sodium, uh, mercury vapor, all of those are going to be some kind of a ballasted light, which is going to have a reactive component to it. So your KW is not going to equal your KVA. If you got a welder, if you got motors, transformers, any of that, the rest of the industry, basically. All right. So really, it just largely depends on where you're at in the circuit. So if you think about it, the supply of energy is here. All of this is going to be in KVA. Uh, if you have other loads here, I guess it would only be like here, <laughs> you know, but it's the supply side. The only place KW comes into factor is for the load. 
So that's kind of helpful to, to try to remember if you're like ordering a motor or something like that. Is it like, oh crap, is it in, is it in KVA, is it in KW? Um, and if you have some kind of intermediary device that has an input and an output, a lot of times those are in KVA. So in this situation, you know, the, the whole load supplying it is in KVA, but since it's a transformer, it doesn't actually consume any energy. It doesn't like dissipate heat or anything. Um, a very small, a tiny fraction it does, but uh, it's not considered a load. It's just an intermediary device that allows for energy transfer. So you're gonna be in KVA with a transformer as well. So it's not until you get to the light bulb inside the house that has rated in wattage that is consuming any of the energy. There's just energy being sent through here. It's picking up on the energy. It's transferring more energy here. So it's really just talking about capacity the entire time through a transformer. But once you get to the load, you're in KW. So if something is supplying power, you're gonna be in KVA. If it's consuming power, you're gonna be in KW. So let's pause for a minute because batteries are a little bit different. Batteries, this was the thing that got me thinking when I was at that race, is I saw that the charger hooked up to a battery, the charger is rated in KVA, right? Supply side sending to the battery. The battery should be a load. It should be consuming It should, because it's the load. So it should be in KW and it is in KW, but batteries are not loads. Batteries are storage devices. They're not actually consuming dissipating heat or dissipating light. They're just storing the energy. So I was like, okay, so why are batteries in KW instead of KVA? Because that's how they're rated. Typically they're rated uh, kilowatt hours. How many kilowatts can be delivered over how many hours? Because when you think about it like this, when a battery is not being supplied energy, but when it's the thing doing the supplying of the energy, it should be rated in KVA, right? Because it's supplying, but it's, not just about the supply versus the load. Truthfully, it has more to do with whether or not there's reactive components. If there's inductors, capacitors, things like that in the circuit, then just about supply and load. So in reality, what makes something KW versus KVA is if it has no impedance or if it has impedance. And impedance means that you have resistors and you have reactants, which you, you have like uh, inductors and capacitors in the circuit as well. You're gonna have a certain amount of your power that is reactive power, a certain amount of the power that is true power, and then you're gonna have an impedance, which also means that you're gonna have an apparent power. And because of those different things, we rate these in KVA because there's a power factor to consider. With KW, there is no power factor. There's not gonna be any difference between the power that is being transferred and the power that the load is consuming because it is a completely resistive circuit. So in that case, our power, or our, our, our uh, VA equals our watts. It's the same thing. So we just say KW because it's whatever is being generated, whatever stored up is all being consumed in this DC circuit. That's the case, right? So batteries are DC circuits. So in this case, everything that is being dumped is, is the same thing as what's being consumed. So with DC, specifically with batteries, we're gonna call it KW, we're not gonna call it KVA, but all of the other instances that we talked about a minute ago, they all had some kind of reactive component to them. And that's the key to KW versus KVA.